I've known a lot of the people at Leapfrog for many years, um, de- more than a decade in some cases, and I've always respected not just the discipline, the competence, the experience, the skill sets that they, they all bring to bear, but also an innate humanity. Most of them are in it, not most, all of them are in this work because um, of a, a larger quest, a meaning, a purpose. Uh, so so it, it seems like somehow LeapFrog has found people who actually uh, bring to life their basic credo of profit with purpose. Hello, I'm John Treadgold, and today I'm speaking with Dr. Biju Mohandas. He was recently made partner at Leapfrog Investments, and he's the co-lead on healthcare in South Asia and Africa. Dr. Mohandas, welcome. Thank you for your time today. John, entirely my pleasure. Thank you for speaking with me. Now, you've recently come on board with Leapfrog. It comes after almost a decade. Uh, at the IFC, where you're working on on healthcare um, and education. So I'm intrigued. What was it about LeapFrog that attracted you? John, that's a great question. The journey that led me to LeapFrog began more than 20 years ago when I was commissioned as an officer in the Indian Army. I spent a significant portion of my time in the Army in fairly remote rural locations in the northeastern parts of India with very high rates of poverty at that point of time. And as a result, there was a critical lack of basic amenities such as healthcare, education, um, and the army had to step in to help provide these. However, even under those circumstances, I found to my surprise that several discretionary items, cigarettes, alcohol, confectionaries, found their way into the hands of people there. And not only did it find its way, it was also affordable seemingly. It was packaged in a way, sold in a way that it was affordable. That got me thinking. I I started asking myself the power of capitalism, which has placed these discretionary items, made it affordable to the poor in fairly remote locations. How can one tap into that power to provide basic amenities, which are almost human rights, healthcare, education, to those who can't easily afford it? And that began what ended up being a lifelong quest. I did not know it at that point, but that's that's um, um, what it ended up being drew me after my tenure at the army into um, business school and post that into the newly emerging segment or sector of impact investing. I worked across multiple organizations, including the IFC, um, across multiple countries, multiple continents, and eventually decided to make the move to leapfrog. And I would think there were three reasons that um, that attracted me to leapfrog. One, the scale of this team's ambition, not just the founder, Andy Cooper, whom you know, but the rest of the team as well, their ambition to attract billions of dollars of private capital, churn it through a discipline process and get them to the hands of creative entrepreneurs in in Sub-Saharan Africa and in Asia, who are then going to use those dollars to provide creative solutions. So going back to my 20 year quest, that is, I, I felt that this organization has the ambition to want to do that at scale. Um, the second bit was, I've known a lot of the people at LeapFrog for many years, um, de- more than a decade in some cases, and I've always respected not just the discipline, the competence, the experience, the skill sets that they, they all bring to bear, but also an innate humanity. Most of them are in it, not most, all of them are in this work because um, of a, a larger quest, a meaning, a purpose. Uh, so so it, it seems like somehow LeapFrog has found people who actually uh, bring to life their basic credo of profit with purpose. So uh, for me, these two factors linked with the third one, which was, uh, this was a, this was one of the few impact investors working across Asia and Africa, uh, 
all three of the, these pieces came together and, and um, seemed to sync well with where I was in life and my journey so far. Great. Yeah, look, as you say, you've been at the intersection of, of health and investment for decades, but in the middle of a, of a pandemic, um, the importance of healthcare is clearer than ever. So what are some of the most important changes that, that you've recognized as a result of, of COVID-19? The first change that is happening in the healthcare space as a result, to some extent accelerated by the, uh, by, by the pandemic, is even more innovations are going to emerge at the intersection of technology and health and regulators as well as consumers are likely to be far more accepting of these innovations. One other metric, I believe, in the United States last year, 2020, 60% of the population tried telemedicine. This is compared to maybe 10, 15, 20% over decades before that. Right. In, in a single year, a significant shift has happened. So that's that's one in our view, in my view, a secular trend. The second bit is the understanding and the true acceptance of the fact that healthcare has to shift from what it has traditionally been, treatment of sick people, to preventing illness. And that is ever more important in the context of aging populations across the world, particularly in the developed world and in many emerging or developing countries as well. Um, it is important to shift healthcare from treating sick to taking care of uh, the, our, our existing health. And that too has been to a large extent catalyzed by the pandemic because, or, or not catalyzed, accelerated by the pandemic because people have realized that if you are healthy and do not suffer from chronic ailments, or even while suffering from chronic ailments are able to maintain a certain degree of wellness and fitness, the chances of uh, deleterious effects coming out of COVID are lower. So I think these two trends, which were anyways in play, have been accelerated significantly as a result of, um, of the pandemic. Yeah, and, and then the next challenge is funding. Right, funding, you know, it's a key challenge in, in every country of the world, but in, in emerging markets in areas of South Asia and Africa, um, it's compounded by large populations and, and, and pressure on government budgets. So what role do you, do you see the private sector playing here uh, you know, to offer services that otherwise simply wouldn't be available? One of the many different areas that could be strengthened in order to get that virtuous cycle in play, more private capital going behind more private entrepreneurs and enterprises, which results in more innovations, which results in good healthcare delivered to even the poor. So that virtuous cycle, in, in order for that to kick off, one major thing that can be done is um, demand side financing. If governments across emerging markets focus on figuring out ways to ensure that public health insurance system is put in place. And we are seeing this happen. Nigeria has um, taken giant strides in it. Kenya has taken giant strides. Ghana, um, Rwanda, India, many states in India. Not to say that it's all done and dusted. A lot of issues still, a lot more work needs to be done. But if that one element can be taken care of by the government, then the infrastructure part, the innovation part, could possibly come from private capital and private enterprises. And so they're narrowing that focus even more uh, into those portfolio companies of LeapFrog. What are some of the key impacts that, that you hope to, to help deliver? Firstly, with regards to how we think of our portfolio, we want to invest in entrepreneurs, enterprises that are essentially looking to back three major trends, at least one, if not more of them. One is what we discussed earlier, the intersection of technology and health. Uh, to give you an example, we recently closed an investment in India into a company called Healthify Me, which um, is a digital app that allows people to track their diet, allows them to track their exercise, provides them with plans for both exercise and diet. So, so and it is being done via uh, a, a cellular uh, using cell phones. 
which means that their scale is huge talking about impact they already have 20 million subscribers um several billions of pounds of weight has been lost through that app um so so that is one area the the intersection of technology and health so we we back entrepreneurs there and healthify me is one good example and i gave you some numbers around the impact that is having uh, the second area is private health insurance which again we spoke about earlier in in a slightly different context we believe that um, particularly with technology coming into play for the first time health insurance has a real chance of working at relatively low premium because the medical cost could be reduced um, through better wellness more focus on preventing disease as opposed to treating and then paying for it um, the administrative cost can be reduced so we have, we make investments in entities that are able to innovatively provide health insurance and risk cover to the most vulnerable bima is an example which was uh, an investment done by my colleagues in the financial services team reaches 6 million people already and then finally the third bucket is across the markets that we operate in there is a consolidation happening in what has been a traditionally fragmented space, which results in economies of scale, many other positive externalities, um, lower costs, better management teams coming in. A great example of this would be one of our investments in Good Life. It is the largest retail pharmacy player in what is a hugely fragmented and hugely inefficient market in East Africa. They reach 1.5 million customers a year already, and they are barely getting started. So overall, in across these trends, we make investments. And as a result, we have already, as a portfolio, overshot our impact goals. The, the, ambition that we have presented to our LPs, our investors, was that we will reach 10 million emerging consumers during our fund life. We have already crossed that and we are barely into our fourth year um, as, a, as a fund. So very excited about the number of lives we are impacting, but also the quality of that impact across chronic diseases, providing health insurance when they have never had it, um, providing great quality drugs in markets where even today, 20, 30 percent of medicines are counterfeit. So, so it's there are, the numbers do tell a huge part of the story, but there's a bigger story from a qualitative perspective as well. And, and on the numbers front, as I said, very, very happy that we have already crossed our aim we aim to do even more. Yeah, so interesting. And for all those companies, uh, you mentioned technology. So I'll make I'll make this my last question. You know, how do you see that intersection of healthcare and technology going forward? I could spend uh, an hour, two hours talking about it, but trying to trying to boil it down and almost summarize some of the threats that we had uh, begun working on earlier, I would say technology is going to have three major impacts. One, it is going to shift healthcare from being treatment of the sick to prevention. And the reason for that is all of us these days, even the poor are carrying around data which is being recorded and which can then be analyzed and therefore our behaviors can be analyzed and we can be on a literally on a moment by moment basis pinged to improve our behavior and one of the most ubiquitous design devices that everyone is carrying is a is a phone right so so therefore uh, be, through innovations emerging at the convergence of tele uh, the the increasing prevalence of mobiles the lowering costs of smartphones lowering costs of data will result in um, shift of healthcare from being treatment of the sick to prevention of a lot of ailments or at least better management of chronic diseases which results in fewer morbidities and mortalities so that would be one major trend as a result of technology the second again we touched upon it is the magic of and the power of the gene um, we today are able to sequence any genes faster than we have ever been able to. Uh, DeepMind, which is uh, recently, which has recently um, published uh, the intent to um, publicly 
to be, to, to in, 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 in very simple terms, become the Google for sequencing of, um, of the gene to some extent, and also um, various protein codes and so on. Um, that, that entire space could result in uh, the healthcare ecosystem shifting to personalized medicine, where in, instead of coming up with cures which are very generic and which work at a population level, one could come, for, come up with preventative measures as well as cures, which are very much linked to the specific disease and the specific individual as a result of the better understanding of the proteins, changes to which causes diseases, genes, changes to which causes diseases, and so on. So th that's the second major bit, shift towards personalized medicine. And then the third shift, which for me is a combination of these, but co most exciting in some ways, is I and you, the consumers, the patients, the humans, become the center of healthcare as opposed to a hospital. Not that hospitals are not necessary or won't be required. They will still be required. There will be, um, there will be certain surgeries that you, one will need to get done in the hospital, even in this new world that we are talking about. But a lot of healthcare will be centered around me and you, and it will be designed for, for me and you. So I think and this this uh, is is very much central to leapfrog's overall thesis as well because we place our consumer the emerging consumer at the center of our work so in in that sense very ex that is why i said that that is the third and the most exciting element of the change from my perspective because it very much syncs with our philosophy as an organization all the healthcare the entire healthcare ecosystem is going to focus towards the individual and where he or she is residing and living um, whether it is care whether it is treatment whether it is prevention and technology will enable that so interesting look dr mondes thank you for your for your insights thank you for your time thank you so much john <laughs>